This is Gregory Abston from Professional Medical Education Association, and today we're going to take a look at the proper way to uh, set up and use a coposcope, or really any surgical microscope. The principles are the same. So I'm going to talk about this and show you how to uh, focus it, set the interpupillary uh, distance on it, fine focus it, use the green filters since these are uh, coposcopes, and I'll uh, go in and out with some little video cuts for close-ups as we go. Um, first of all, you've got to be comfortable with the scope. So you've got to adjust the height of the scope so you're not breaking your back. And of course, if you have an adjustable patient bed, the patient can go up and down too. So with this one, I've already done that, so I'm not bent over too much. Um, I have here a little apple and a holder as my target, so that's what I'm going to use as we do this. The first thing that I'm going to do is to turn on the uh, power for the light source, uh, and you can adjust the intensity uh, on those as well, on most of them. Uh, so I've got the right height, uh, my light source is on. Um, I now set, just grossly, my interpupillary distance. So when you put your eyes up, just barely touching, you want to see a one solid round area that you're looking at. You don't want to see two separate dots and your eyes can't focus on them. So I'm going to twist these back and forth with my eyes just off the oculars until I've got one solid circle that I'm looking through. Um, at this point, this one has a fine focus, and I'm going to, um, in a minute, zoom in on that so you can see it. But it's a translation stage that goes back and forth. What you want to do to begin with on one like this is just adjust it so that it's in the middle. In other words, you've got as much adjustment uh, forward as you do aft. But the gross focus on one like this uh, is that it's on a stand with three wheels and you simply push it back and forth. So there are others that um, hang down from a pedestal overhead and you just fly those back and forth as well. So since I have my inner pupillary distance set, I'm going to do the, the uh, gross focus, just moving it back and forth until it looks to be in focus with me, and I'm adjusting the tilt on this up and down as I go with this handpiece here to do that. Um, all right, so I'm in focus. Uh, I've got an apple in there right now. Um, next, I wanna set my oculars. Now, it, it kind of depends on whether you wear glasses or not for any surgical microscope. On one like this, and let me grab another set of oculars, I'm gonna get up a little close. You can see these do not have round cups on them. They're just kind of flat. Whereas another set of oculars uh, like this might have these uh, round cups. The difference is that if you do have the round cups, um, and you wear glasses, you can fold those cups down uh, so that your glasses touch the front of the lens. If you've got the ones like these with no rubber cup or the one I'm using right now, then those um, glasses will just kind of rest against there. The reason that's important is because when these are set up, um, not only is your inner pupillary distance important to have one picture, but the distance from your, uh, the front of your eye to the lenses in these oculars is also important. So when you do that, you'll have to move your head back and forth just slightly to find uh, where you have one central picture and then it's in focus. Okay, well what about the adjustments on these oculars themselves? You can see, let me get up here a little bit, that they have marks on the side and you can adjust these back and forth. Well, that's what I'm gonna do here now. Um, and it could be different for each eye. Uh, you can, even if you wear glasses, you can do this without wearing your glasses, as long as your vision uh, isn't, it doesn't need to be corrected to the extreme. All right, so my first step is to zero the oculars. There's a little mark when you twist them where you put it on the zero mark. Um, and here, I'm gonna show you that on this a little bit closer up. If I can, these are uh, green right there, but if you can see that, there is a zero mark right there, 
and then when I move it back and forth, it'll change. All right, you zero them to begin with. Now, on some of these, however, this one does the same thing. Uh, this one has, let me get up here so you can see it. It's got a zero mark, but there's a little uh, kind of push lever on the side. And one like this, you have to push that lever in. That unlocks it. So when you push it in, you can twist it. But when you lift your finger up, it doesn't move anymore. It's locked in place. Uh, all right, back to the oculars. Okay, so now we have it set up so that we are grossly in focus. And um, my uh, vision is I've got one round dot when I'm doing that. Okay, let's adjust the eyes with the oculars. Here, I'm going to close one eye. Let's say I close my right eye and I'm looking through the left. Let's use the fine focus to adjust that. Now, the oculars have been set to zero, so they're both zeroed out. So I look through my left eye and I adjust that fine focus just till I get it sharp. Okay, there I go. So I'm sharp with my left eye. Well, let's now try the right eye. So I shut my left eye, I look with the right. Ah, but this time I don't use the fine focus, I use the adjustment on the ocular itself. I turn that ocular back and forth until it's sharp um, in that eye. So now I'm set both ways. So we zeroed it out to begin with. We did the fine focus with one eye, one zero, and then we adjusted the other eye. When you're using um, a um, surgical microscope or a colposcope, you don't go back and forth all the time adjusting the oculars. Once it's done, it's done. The rest is your fine focus. Okay, now a step up. I'm starting here. Let's go over the body of it and then I'm going to show you how I start with low magnification and I do my fine focus on that and then I do my uh, high magnification, do my fine focus on that. The reason is as I go back and forth I don't want to have to be adjusting my scope all the time and this pretty much gets it set. Let's take a second and look at these controls uh, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. We've got on this scope uh, the oculars themselves. We've got the, um, let's, let's zoom and then I'll get closer here. Okay, so on this side, you can see my magnification. Right now, I'm on a, uh, on a five, but I can rotate it to 10. I now have it set at a 10. I can go up to high mag at 20. And that's what we're going to do when we finish uh, focusing this with a fine focus. We'll start on low magnification, always start on low magnification or you'll get lost trying to focus. Then once you've got um, both of the ocular set, then we're going to switch it over to high magnification, use the fine focus to adjust that, and then in the middle. Uh, on the other side of the scope, Here's the objective lens, usually on a colposcope, it's set to 300. Uh, I want to show you the uh, green only filter on it, and the scopes all have them in different places. On this particular scope, the green only filter is down here, they're usually marked, and it's physically a filter. You just switch it back and forth, there the filter is on, there the filter is off, and you use that to enhance uh, the appearance of blood vessels. Uh, remember, opposite colors absorb. So if you've got green light, it is absorbed by its opposite, which is black. Well, if it's absorbed, it's not reflected. So it makes that target uh, look a little bit darker when you work. Let me zoom out a little bit and show you some of the other adjustments. Okay, that's the basics of the colposcope, but then sometimes when you move this thing around, let's say you're going to tilt it here back and forth, sometimes they get a little bit sloppy, so most have a little control to tighten up one angle of motion on it. Uh, this one down here adjusts so that it's easier to turn it sideways. If it's flopping around too much, just turn it and that'll take that part out. On this particular scope, you also have an adjustment that makes it go slightly up or down as you adjust it, and that'll vary by scope. So just compare the type that you're working with and looking at it. 
Okay, now I've got everything set. So I've done my um, adjustment with my gross focus, the fine focus, a low mag, and then I've adjusted the oculars. So looking through that, it should be in focus, which it is, it looks good. So let's uh, change that over to the uh, high focus. All right, now let's look at it. Um, now you'll notice that when you go to high focus, there's less depth of field. So you might have a place that's in focus, but it goes out of focus quicker uh, when you go back and forth. So it's, it's just for the close-up examination. At this point, I'm going to try to fine focus that on the high. Now when I go back to the middle uh, magnification, it should be right on the money. So when I look, yep, yeah, for me it is. Uh, if you had to adjust it, it's fine. But the point of this is you now have the ability to go back and forth between magnifications from low to high um, without having to make major adjustments. Maybe you have to do the fine focus a little bit, but very minimally. You don't have to stop and mess with the colposcope when you do this. The uh, low magnifications are used for the general look-see around orientation to figure out where you are and examine it. But when you want to go in close up and inspect one particular area, that's where you're going to flip over to the high magnification. And if this shows up on the video, uh, let me show you here when we flip on and off the green filter there we are right into the camera and there's the green filter and there it's off um, I will say that there are some electronic colposcopes video colposcopes that don't necessarily have the stereo vision but some people like them and the the green only option is an artifact of the video you press a button and it does that but let me show you just quickly the difference Here's a set of oculars off of the colposcope. And notice that it has two ray paths in it. Um, essentially, a separate path, one for each eye. That's why you get stereo vision out of this. And if you have instruments or something else that's blocking one of your eye paths, well, you can still see through the other eye, but you lose your stereo vision. And you do have a tendency to lose that with the electronic camera devices as well, if that's all you're using is the depth of field. Now, in spite of that, some people work well on the videos and they have no problem with it whatsoever. Some of these uh, colposcopes and surgical microscopes also have attachment ports, and of course that's going to vary depending on what you buy. But in this case, we can put on another ocular, uh, particularly in teaching programs, that's worthwhile. So there is a port up here at the top that you take the cap off of, and then we're going to put this uh, teaching head up inside of here, and we'll tighten it up a little bit. Let me loosen it. You can turn this around, whatever is convenient for the user, uh, then lock it down. You will have a similar adjustment of the um, ocular to compensate for the eye. And there is on this one, there's a separate focus and then an ocular adjustment when you do that. These ports are also where video cameras uh, hook up when you do that. Uh, some colposcopes have no ports, some have one, some have multiple. But that's how this works with a teaching head on it. So that's our orientation uh, to colposcopy. Um, later on, if you have a chance, we have a lab video on using inanima models. Here I've got a, an apple up there. But we can do other things. We've got um, uh, a piece of pipe, which is a cervical model that we can use, uh, put a speculum in it, and there are some other things to use besides these. Uh, you can put in potatoes and apples and sausage and biopsy those or use electrosurgery or even use laser, but that's the subject for another lab video. So thanks for your attention. Thanks. It's Greg saying goodbye.